get to be my age, certain things become clearer than ever. I know the American story. Again and again, I've seen the contest between competing forces in the battle for the soul of our nation, between those who want to pull America back to the past and those who want to move America into the future. My lifetime has taught me to embrace freedom and democracy, a future based on core values that have defined America, honesty, decency, dignity, equality, to respect everyone, to give everyone a fair shot, to give hate no safe harbor. Now, other people my age see it differently. The American story of resentment, revenge, and retribution, that's not me. In my career, I've been told I was too young. By the way, they didn't let me on the Senate elevators for votes sometimes. They're not a joke. And I've been told I'm too old. Whether young or old, I've always been known I've always known what endures. I've known our North Star. The very idea of America is that we're all created equal and deserves to be treated equally throughout our lives. We've never fully lived up to that idea, but we've never walked away from it either. And I won't walk away from it now. I'm optimistic. I really am. I'm optimistic, Nancy. The issue facing our nation isn't how old we are, it's how old are our ideas. Hate, anger, revenge, retribution are the oldest of ideas. But you can't lead America with ancient ideas that only take us back. You lead America, the land of possibilities, you need a vision for the future and what can and should be done. Tonight you've heard mine. I see a future where, defending democracy, you don't diminish it. I see a future where we restore the right to choose and protect our freedoms, not take them away. I see a future where the middle class has finally has a fair shot and the wealthy have to pay their fair share in taxes. I see a future but we saved the planet from the climate crisis and our country from gun violence. Above all, I see a future for all Americans. I see a country for all Americans. And I will always be president for all Americans because I believe in America. I believe in you, the American people. You're the reason we've never been more optimistic about our future than I am now. So let's build the future together. Let's remember who we are. We are the United States of America. And there is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we act together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. President Biden closing the State of the Union address last night, speaking for just over an hour. The president made his case for a second term, leaning into some of the themes that will play prominently as we head into November, like abortion rights and immigration. Biden also hammered away at Donald Trump and his Republican critics over a number of policies calling them out, offering a sharp contrast between his administration's accomplishments and those of his predecessor. Welcome to Morning Joe, along with Joe, Willie, and me. We have the host of Way Too Early, White House Bureau Chief at Politico, Jonathan Lemire, former White House Director of Communications to President Obama, Jennifer Palmieri, President of the National Action Network and host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton, President Emeritus of the Council of Foreign Relations, Richard Haas, and Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist and Associate Editor of the Washington Post, Eugene Robinson is 
is with us. Also with us this morning, author and NBC News presidential historian, Michael Beschloss. And Joe, I will tell you, I'm at the Forbes uh, Know Your Value 3050 Summit here in Abu Dhabi on this International Women's Day. Last night, President Biden spoke a lot about women's issues uh, impacted by the overturning of Roe versus Wade. And we're going to get to all of that in just a moment. But I'm telling you, Joe Biden... Proved, I think he still has a pulse. That's number one. And Speaker Mike Johnson might have rolled his eyes more than both my daughters in their entire lives. What's your take? Well, I mean, had a pulse. He had Frazier's yeah. left <laughs> hook. I mean, I'm, I'm I have joking. never seen. And, and part of this is delivery. Part of it is speech writing. Part of it is setting up the argument for the fall. I've, I've sat through a lot of these, uh, and I have never seen one side put in so many uncomfortable positions as the Republicans were last night because they were on the wrong side of history, they were on the wrong side of the polls, they were on the wrong side of politics, mm -hmm. they were on the wrong side of decency. This was, this was a tour de force uh, by Joe Biden, and you had Peggy Noonan last week calling him uh, cranky old Joe after his angry press conference, who last night, uh, Michael Beschloss likened him to Harry Truman. And there was a real give him hell Harry a part of this. But what, what really completed it was, it was give him hell Harry meets Ronald Reagan's A City Shining Brightly on the hill for all the world right. to see. When he mm. says, you know, he's been around a long time. He's been called too young. He's been called too old. But listen to this. But I know what endures. I can see our North Star, that we are all created equal. And we have never reached, we have never reached uh, that goal. But that doesn't mean we don't give up trying. Um, and I thought it was a brilliant turn on Donald Trump when he said, you know, it, it's not about how old you are. It's about how old your ideas are. And, and time and time again, I just I, I go I go back there. There were just so many beautiful lines here again, delivered beautifully. He said, uh, my lifetime has taught me to embrace freedom and democracy, to give hate no safe harbor. Now, some other people my age, they see a different story, an American story of resentment, revenge, and retribution. That's not me. And in the words of Naomi Biden, mm. doubt him, then watch him. He's been defeating the odds his entire <laughs> life. This has been a recurring theme, Michael, for us, where Joe Biden's underestimated before Iowa. Right. He, he's underestimated before and after New Hampshire. He's, he's been told he's too old since 2000. He just keeps surprising people. He just keeps winning. He just keeps outperforming. I have no doubt that every Republican in that chamber was shocked by what they saw last night because he did it to them again. As Newt Gingrich said, at some point, we'll figure this out. He said this after the 22 election. We always under, Democrats always underestimated Ike. They always mm -hmm. underestimated Reagan, now it's us. We always underestimate Biden.